Well, thanks for coming in. I really thanks. appreciate it. Uh, talk to me about your documentary. What's it about? Where Soldiers Come From is a, a coming of age story about a group of teenage kids who, um, upon graduating from high school, decide to join the National Guard. And so we follow their journey for four years, and they're best friends from childhood. And so we follow their journey for a year and a half before they're deployed as soldiers to Afghanistan and then in Afghanistan and um, and then a year or so after they get back. So it's a we see them change over a four year period. And what made you pick this group of guys? Well, I'm actually from the area from, from uh, my hometown is where they're from. And so I decided to go back and do a film about rural America because I felt like rural America, small town America is often portrayed uh, you know, as a stereotype in mainstream media. So I wanted to tell a more universal, in-depth story about small town America. And um, once I was there, back in my hometown, I read about the National Guard unit, and I thought, well, that could be a possibility. And that's when I met, I went to one of their trainings, and I met Dominic, who is the main person in the film. Um, and he told me that he had joined right after high school, and then he turned to a group of young guys next to him and said and these are all my friends and we all joined together and I thought well that could be a really interesting story and it really turned into a like I said it becomes more a film about growing up and because um, they really are very young and innocent when we first start filming they're all about 19 years old and now they're uh, 23 they're 23 year old veterans so you know they've changed quite a bit in those four years um, and another thing that the film became um, as we continued to shoot, was it became a film about the war at home um, and how it affects um, the families and the loved ones and even the whole town um, that is left behind. So a lot of the film is about that, is about the place where these guys come from and how that place and the people there also change because it's a very tight-knit, small community. And <clears throat> it also becomes a film about the war at home because of um, the young men in the film, when they return back from war, um, the war doesn't really end for them. Uh, they're still dealing with, with a lot of issues, traumatic brain injury and PTSD, and just adjusting back to a normal civilian life again. So. so it sounds like you kind of set out to do one thing and it evolved into something so much bigger. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I've always had wanted to tell a story about, um, you know, the place that I was from and I think that it's still a, a story about the place I'm from. It's very much about that town and, and um, the people there. Um, but yes, it becomes, it happens a lot with documentary filmmaking. You don't really know what's going to happen. So your story kind of evolves as you're shooting. So. Well, and did you travel over to Afghanistan to shoot the video or did you give them cameras to take with them or how did that work? Yeah, I, I traveled to Afghanistan um, three times. Um, so I was there a total of five months of their nine month deployment. Um, and I also did give them uh, cameras, just regular cheap video cameras to use. And then also um, these helmet cam, turret cams that I would, they would attach to their, the gun turret on top of the truck. Um, and on the dashboard of their truck if they were driving. So I was able to get footage that way as well. Wow, so you, did you have to work with the military to be able to work this all out, I'm assuming? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I had to get permission to embed with them as a you know reporter or, well, as a documentary filmmaker. But um, so, you know, and that took quite a, that was a long process getting that permission. But because I've been filming them already in Michigan at their, their National Guard trainings, mm -hmm it was uh, easier than to get the permission to embed with them in, a, in Afghanistan. It was very different than what a lot of other reporters going there would do. They would, they'll want, they'll request to be in the like, you know, the hot spot and they'll be there for a few days or whatever. But this was more, you know, just following these very particular um, soldiers, this, this one unit. And so um, I, I think it was not too difficult for them to give me permission since I was just with that unit and I'd already been with them for a year and a half in Michigan, so. Well, and it looked like they saw some pretty good action. I mean, you see a lot of roadside bombs that mm -hmm. blow up. What was the experience like? Yeah, well, their their main job was to look for roadside bombs. They were a, what they call a route clearance patrol. So they would go out on missions um, and look for uh, improvised explosive devices, roadside bombs, and um, they would often escort other military trucks that were not as up armored as theirs um, 
so they would go first in the convoy and clear the roads for the people coming behind them. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of uh, action, but different kind of action than than you might normally think of. It would be you know hours of driving around looking for a bomb, and then either uh, the convoy would get hit by a bomb or they would find a bomb and dig it up. And so it was like a lot of boredom mixed with like kind of very dramatic explosions and. And, uh, you know, several of the guys have uh, traumatic brain injury issues now because they were in trucks that um, protect them now, so they, they won't necessarily get killed. Like, a, like in Iraq, they used to drive Humvees around, and those were terrible because they didn't protect them. If they get hit by a bomb, they'd usually die or lose limbs. Or, but these trucks protect them, but then they suffer something, they suffer concussions, and then they get repeated concussions, so it's kind of like being a professional football player. And so they have a lot of these, I think it's kind of the new subtle war wound. Um, it's a traumatic brain injury is kind of the hidden war wound because it's very subtle and it's something that a lot of the symptoms don't show up till after they're back, but many of them can't sleep and they have irritability and anger issues and um, you know just a lot of coping issues, headaches and and the not sleeping is, is a real problem. So it's something that, um, it, I mean, NPR has done a lot of stories about it recently, actually. It's, a, it's kind of the new wound, and the U.S. military is kind of figuring out how to deal and treat it. But right now, it's, there isn't really much out there in terms of treating it. So. so how do you think you were able to portray them? Like you said, it's not really shown in the mainstream media, the overall facts. How do you think you were able to do that? Um, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Sure, basically just <laughs> overall, you know, how do you, what do you hope your audience walks away thinking from this film that maybe they're not being able to see by watching news reports or mm -hmm. other movies? Well, I think what was uh, really, um, I think it's important about the film is that you actually get to really know these guys and their families, and so you really care about them over time within this 90 minute span of the film. and. I think most Americans are very far removed from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan because they don't know somebody personally who has gone there as a soldier and been affected by it. And so I, what I hope is that my film will, you know, kind of bridge that divide and people will really get to know um, the young men in my film and their families through this film and feel compassion and understanding for them and, you know, learn from them and maybe see a bit of themselves in, in the people on the screen. And that's mainly why I make documentaries is so is to make connections between people that wouldn't normally ever connect and um, and have viewers see a bit of themselves and the people on the screen even if those people are very different from them so. Wow um, and it screens when does it screen it screens today Monday at 2 p.m. at the Vimeo theater in the convention center and it screens tomorrow Tuesday at 2 30 at Alamo South and then it screens again on Saturday, March 19th, um, at the Paramount Theater. And um, all the people in the film are here, so they'll be there after for the Q&A. So. For all of the screenings, or just one at Paramount? No, uh, the one today and tomorrow, they will all be there. And the one at the Paramount, uh, just the, the three main boys. But the, the families are here now, too, so yeah. Wow, excellent. Yeah. And um, what's up next for you? You're Austin based. What are you? What well, are you I'm doing? looking for a job. So <laughs> <laughs> seriously, if somebody wants to hire me, yeah, I'm hoping to you know work for other people for a little while. So um, as a producer and a shooter, but um, you know, and I have some ideas for projects. So maybe not projects that will take four years. But <laughs> that is a long time. But how else would you be able to tell this story without That's taking true. four years? That's true. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of necessary. So awesome. Well, thank yeah. you for coming in. Thank I really you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs>